everybody. I want to take a second to talk about the Mana Traders series. Uh, Mana Traders is now sponsoring the channel, RW Hobbies. Or RW Makes Magic. Uh, helping me get all the decks I need to make the videos that everybody wants to watch. So, uh, really appreciate that. But, another big thing that's awesome about this is I get to play in the Mana Traders series. Which is an awesome, awesome series. Best prizes online at the moment. Uh, 15,000 monthly payout. That's to all their players. Free entry. Uh, it's open to, to all, even non mana traders users, but the mana traders users, like people subscribe, get 10x prize multiplayer or multiplier. So you get a lot more prizes if you're subscribed. And honestly, it's really hard to play Magic Online nowadays without mana traders. Um, I was one of the lucky few who could keep doing it because I had uh, a large collection from before they started. But there's not very many people like me left that just have an old collection on Magic Online. And honestly, even with that old collection, it was still really, really hard for me to change decks and keep trying out new things. And now that I have, you know, now that I have Mana Traders back, I feel like I'm going to be able to do a lot more videos, do a lot more with the thing. And honestly, I don't think you can get into Magic Online without using it nowadays. I think it's just a must use. And if you want to get subscribed to Mana Traders, you can help out the channel by using code A22EN when you subscribe. You get 15% off, be eligible to play in all these series. Uh, you can get to battle against me on there. So should be a lot of fun. Uh, and remember, uh, I'm going to let you get to the content now, but remember if you uh, would subscribe, it would really help the channel. So uh, thanks, everybody, for that. And with that, we'll talk to you next time. All right, welcome, everybody, to another episode of Making Magic Happen, brought to you by RW Hobbies and Games, Livonia, Michigan. I'm Zach, and today we're trying out Scourge of the Skyclaves in Modern. This is a... Two mana star star uh, with kicker of four and a black. Um, we're not really going to use the kicker. That's not really relevant. What, what matters is it says Scourge of the Skyclaves power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. So what that means is if my life total is 15 and my opponent's life total is 18, Scourge of the Skyclaves is a 2-2. Two -two. If we're both at 9, my opponent or my Scourge of the Skyclaves is an 11-11. Uh, very powerful card. This thing can get very, very big very, very quickly. Uh, and it's basically another Death Shadow. If you've played Modern, you know what Death Shadow is, but it's kind of the same thing. It says Death Shadow is a 13-13 for one mana, and it gets minus X, minus X, where X is your life total. So when you start hurting yourself, it does a lot of damage. Um, yeah, you get yourself down to like 5, you got an 8-8, eight, eight, pair with a Team or Battle Rage, which gives a Trample and Double Strike, and boom, they're dead. Uh, basically what we're doing is these cheap creatures are starting to become uh, kind of just the best cheap creatures in modern and it's not close anymore. Monastery Swift Spear I think just is the best one drop in modern. I don't think it's close. It it just is very, very powerful. Um, Shadow's like the only other one drop in contention. So why don't we put them in the same deck? Soul Scar Mage has just become like the budget Swift Spear. Like it's not as good as Swift Spear, but it's good enough that it's fine to play it as the 8th copy. And then what we're pairing it with is the best 1 mana spells in Thoughtseize, Lightning Bolt, and then... I mean, those are the best 1 mana spells in these two colors, right? And then all of the Phyrexian mana you can find, which... Phyrexian mana has traditionally uh, <laughs> been considered a pretty big mistake in Modern. Uh, and we got a lot of it. We got Apostle's Blessing, which lets which lets a red-black deck protect its creatures, which is kind of wild. For one mana, I can, like, counter kill spells on my things. I've got Dismember, uh, which is a very, very potent kill spell. One mana gives something minus five, minus five. I do have to pay four life, which would be a significant cost in a format where I'm playing Shocklands if it wasn't also, you know, giving my creature plus four, plus four, which is kind of absurd. Uh, we got Mishra's Bobble, which uh, isn't necessarily broken on its own. It's a zero mana artifact that you sacrifice it, and then at the beginning of the next upkeep, you draw a card. And all you do is look at the top card of either your library or the opponent's library. That's it. It's just looking at the top card. The reason we play it is because we're a Luris deck. Luris is another busted card. Uh, this is during each of your turns, you may cast a permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. You just want to have good stuff in your graveyard to cast. We have these 16 creatures. They're excellent to play with Luris if, if they got killed, but if you're playing against like a Path to Exile deck and all your creatures got Path or whatever, and they don't, they're not in the graveyard, 
Uh, we have some bobbles so that we can just start drawing an extra card every time with Lurus, which is pretty strong. Um, and that's basically it. I wanted to try this out today because SEG kind of just wrote an article saying that this is the best deck in Modern at the moment. They said it's the best Thoughtseize deck. Um, they really like this deck, and I've played against it a few times. I haven't been super impressed. Uh, I think Sultai is better. You saw me play Sultai on Wednesday, I believe. And, yeah, I mean, you can go back and watch uh, the, the video from two days ago. The deck was excellent. Um, it felt very strong. It felt like it had the tools to win every single matchup I played. Um, and it felt like if you tuned it and spent some time playing Sultai, you would have a chance to have, like, a 65% win rate, which is really hard to find in Modern. I'll tell you what, I spent years looking for decks that could do that. Um, reactive decks could never do that, so finding reactive decks that could do that was pretty impressive. There were, like, a few times in Modern history where reactive decks were maybe good enough. I think right after the time Search Trace Canto was printed, maybe, but also... No, yeah, there's just been some really broken decks around that time. I don't know. Dredge was really messed up for a while. Infect was really, really strong when it had Gitaxian Probe. I don't know. Um, but anyway, this deck is supposed to be very, very good, so I want to try it out. Uh, sideboard, Fatal Pushes for Big Creatures, Tormod's Crypts, sort of along the same line as Mistress Bobble. I can eat their graveyard, I can keep recasting it with Loris. But I don't have to worry about hitting my own graveyard, which would stink because, you know, I'm a Lurus Agadine's Awakening deck. Um, feed the Swarm to destroy enchantments or creatures, another thing that costs life. I'm just fine to play in this deck. Kozilek's Return, uh, Sweeper, doesn't kill any of my creatures. Uh, I guess it could kill a Shadow or a Scourge of the Sky Skyclaves, but pretty unlikely to kill my creatures. These things get pretty big. Um, it will never kill my prowess creatures because they're one twos with prowess. So when you cast the Kozilek's like return, they're by default X threes when it resolves. And then I've got Coligan's commands and Cruxes as additional threats. I'm not really sure what the Cruxes are for. I guess they're just for against mill decks or against decks where I need additional threats. Um, a little expensive for this deck. This deck isn't super interested in paying four mana for a threat. As you can tell, we are barely interested in paying two. Um, so definitely that's not great, but Crux is a really powerful card, and a grindy matchup will be happy to have it. It also is like surprisingly good at dealing the last few points of damage, and it works pretty well with Team or Battle Rage. You're going to take in for like 15 with that bad boy. All right, let's play some matches. Won the die roll. Would like to play first. Yes, going to reveal Luris. Okay. Uh, this hand doesn't have a land. We have two bobbles. But I'm on the play. I think this has to be a mulligan. Sand does have lands and multiple scourges of the sky clay. How quick can I put a shadow in play? Uh, not super quick. This seems really awkward, man. This deck feels very awkward. Okay, um. I think this is maybe a keep though. Unsure. I'm gonna play Mishra's Bobble. I'm gonna target myself. What's on top? So I'm drawing a Mishra's Bobble. I don't really want to draw a Mishra's Bobble. That's fine. Um. I'm just going to fetch a Blood Crypt. I already got one Mishra's Bobble. That's enough for me. Another Shadow. Alright. We need to draw something that hurts ourselves. Stat. That kind of works. I mean, that definitely works. Opponent, if opponent, opponent plays Shambling Event, so they're somewhat likely to play a creature. This, in fact, the only deck I can even think of that plays Shambling Event is like White Black Taxes. Oh, I was going to say, they could definitely cast a Giver here. Play the Giver! Fetch lane here would be insane. Yes, Plez. You'll love to see it. And 
And then we had two shadows. Only two twos right now, but as soon as the opponent plays a creature, they'll get bigger. Uh, all that said, does feel like they're about to die. Darn it. Goodbye, Shadow Man. I do think there's a realistic point there to just putting Luris in my hand. I think I could have done that. I will do it next turn, certainly. So many scourges. Looks like they're going to cast something. Path to Exile, maybe? Ugh. Alright. <laughs> that hurts. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's brutal. Alright. Don't really care that they have a 1-1. One, one. I'd much rather have a Lurus in my hand. Also, I could have played the Scourge there. They are at 19. It would have been a 1-1. One, one. Don't think that's a particularly strong play, sadly. Um, ooh, what are we pitching here? Probably needs to be one of these Scourges. Don't really need that one. All that much. I have a hard time imagining we can win this game, but maybe. Maybe. I would love to replay a shadow here. I could draw a land. That's really not a good draw in the face of Liliana. Um. Seeing Kaya's Guile with gain 4 life and Shambling Vent with they gain life with this card in hand is terrifying. Makes me really not want to play it. But then also, like, if I don't play it, what am I doing? I'm playing a Luris and Bobbling, I guess. But then I immediately lose my Luris to a Liliana and, like, can't get anything back out of it. I think I need to hope they just use their Kaya's Guile already. Or that they go for... Yeah, this is bad. I kept the TBR because of the 1-1. One, one. I still think it's better than the other Scourge, but maybe that was wrong in retrospect. They just had a kill spell, too. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> it hurts. Ugh, it hurts. It hurts a lot. Drawing only the shit... Like, it's funny because if I had drawn the red half against my deck... Or against this deck, I think I would have had a pretty good shot. I instead drew only the black half. And it hasn't been very good. It's actually interesting. This deck does feel it's just like two different decks smashed together. It's just like a red deck smashed together with a black deck. Stoneforge Mystic. Alright. A Sofi. I have a hard time imagining I can win this match. They even have the pro my deck thing here. Uh, um, I just like, I'm going to have a really hard time dealing with that. I guess I don't take lethal though necessarily, and then I have a a shadow to maybe come back with. 
I don't know. Tough spot. I think I'm probably dead here, but I'm not taking lethal at the moment. An opponent could put me very low. I have to discard one of these cards? Oh, that's going to be a problem. Just say, I kind of need both of these to manipulate my life total. Um, well, the dismember is not going to be very good anymore anyway. And you know what? What? Oh, they drug a card. I was gonna say, they're just gonna plus Lily, aren't they? Just get rid of my hand. That's definitely what they're gonna do. No, they're going for Sacrifice of Creature. I guess they're gonna use Cling to Dust. Interesting. I don't really win the race, and I can't really keep this in hand. Hmm. So it gives me the best shot. Luris would gain life and recast a thing, but if I don't draw a creature, I'm just going to lose this Cling to the Dust in the yard. I guess I have to discard Luris. I don't think I'm in a good spot, but I think I'm in... Oh, well, all right. That's enough for me. Now I have no board. And I'm just dead. All right, playing against black-white mediums. I'm bringing my Colgan's Command and my Crux. So these both seem decent. Uh, opponent did seem to have a lot of graveyard hate, though. Maybe Crux is not actually that good. Whew. <sighs> Mm, yeah, I kind of still like Crooks, I think. I do kind of want to cut these Mutagenic Gross. They don't seem very good. And Apostle's Blessing does seem good. I think I'm Cling to Dust seems pretty bad, too. Didn't really feel like opponent had any graveyard stuff. I think I could get away with, like, two pushes. Maybe, like, a push. Perfect. I've got Dismember, Lightning Bolt, and Lava Dart. I don't really need push all that much. But... One push is going to be fine, I think. This is just the 60th card. I would like another Cake Man, honestly. Like if I could bring in anything, I'd bring in a Cake Man. But... Only had one on the board to bring in. Ugh. Can I get a Swift Spear or Soul Scar Mage, please? It makes these hands so much better. Not being able to play your one drop on one in your aggro deck is really annoying. And also just not having a thought seized. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan. This hand this deck has better hands. Thank you. This is a good hand. Get rid of the battle rage. It's not a hand that's particularly good against uh well uh any removal spell at all, but it's still a good hand if they don't exactly turn one kill my guy. Last turn they played a tap land, so there's that. Yes, Tapland. You love to see it. Your opponent just gives you a free turn in modern. You'll take that every time. Ooh, a bolt here is very nice. Let's see what they're working with. Let's see what we're let's see what we're up against. We got some Inquisitions. Okay, so Kaya's terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. That is not a card I'm very excited to deal with. Uh. And Tidehuller is a little bit of a problem, but also the real issue for this hand is Path to Exile, so I think I'm supposed to take that one, put this in play, and attack for two. I could have bolted, but then I'm like just like kind of giving up my either Lava Dart or Lightning Bolt. If I do it this way, um, they're probably just... I mean, they're going to take one, and I'll use the other to kill the Tide Hollow. 
And then Kaya is going to be a huge issue. I don't know, maybe I should have let them pass and taken Kaya. Kaya seems really bad for me. I do. I don't bolt with the trigger on the stack because then I actually just lose the the light or the lightning bolt forever. It's not something I'm interested in. I don't want to pay life. Crap. I was gonna lava dart. You can actually. Do, I could actually do it that way because this leaves a minus one minus one counter on it. But here we are. They're drawing an Inquisition of Kozilek. So do they block? I think they won't. In fact, I'm reasonably sure they will not. Okay. Um, do I want to deal the extra damage? I probably do. God, I wish I had played the Lava Dart last turn. Um... You can do a lot of damage. I mean, it's not enough to kill them, but it's still a lot of damage. As it stands, I think I'm supposed to. <sighs> can I sacrifice my one of my lands? I think I can. I'm going to lose this to Kaya anyway, which is going to be horrible. Oh, no. Which I already, yeah, I already dealt the damage. I wanted to bolt, too. Oh, well. I can at least kill the Kaya now when they minus. Uh, oh, perfect. I bottomed this! Come on! Darn it, deck. They drew Liliana. Okay. If you could plus, that'd be great. I didn't plus. Alright, well. Cannot imagine winning this game ever. Uh, do I bolt it? Probably can't afford to. Now I guess I do. Sure. I don't I don't think I have any shadow in this game. I've used I sacrificed one of my lands to lava dart. Um, Kai is just heinously good against this deck. <laughs> Gains life, exiles one drops. Oh, yeah. Yep. No shot. Turns off all my Luris, like all my grindy abilities. Alright. I drew two Battle Rages. I only have two in my deck. I even bought one on the Mulligan. Immediately redrew it. Um, yeah. I don't think Black White Medium Piles is a, a very real modern deck. So I wouldn't necessarily call that an indictment on Red Black. Although I will say... That matchup felt impossible. It felt like they had a hundred tools that were really good against me. Uh, black and white is going to be better against shadow decks, though. Like part of the the reason you want to play shadow is that there's not that many good removal spells against you, and they are all concentrated on black and white. When you're playing against black and white, all removal spells that kill shadow, you're gonna have a tough time, I think. All right, here we have a Soul Scar Mage, which is nice because we have not had those. But we do this time, and it's wonderful. Playing against an Arid Mesa, huh? Real shame I can't cast this. Looks like we're playing a mirror, though, honestly. And now we flood out and die. Perfect. You'll love to see it.
You do, in fact, love to see it. Do they have the discard spell? No, the scourge. Interesting. That gets bolted. It will bolt. So even if they have something that can change their life, like a street wraith. Oh, mutagenic growth. Okay. I mean, that looks like that was bad for me. The truth is that it really just means that this lightning bolt gets them. Uh, and now I get to play the giant one. Question is, do I need... No, it doesn't make it any bigger, right? I has a 5-5. Five five. Thoughtsies, okay. It's probably good for the opponent, but it makes my Scourge even larger. Oh man, if they don't have their own Scourge, they might be in a lot of trouble. That said, if they do have their own Scourge, it's not going to be very big. Although, I guess they'll always be the same size no matter what, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I guess I'll play the Tarn. They drew Push. That's a pretty good draw for them. Do they also have a Thoughtseize to go with it? Oh my god. Just had every answer. Alright. Looks like we're in a pretty tough spot. But we're also a deck with lightning bolts in it, so we could just draw things that kill the opponent. They don't seem to have anything, although they, I guess they do still have Alluris. Kind of rough. Alright. Well, that's not ideal. Um, you know, lightning bolt, when you have nothing else and your opponent's at four, isn't great. But it will kill Alluris, which is good. Or if they, or if I draw Swift Spear, it kills the opponent. Let's peck in for one, Plez. Dead. What a series of draws. That's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you win a magic. You know, just get outplayed by your opponent left empty-handed with nothing happening and then draw the perfect two cards in succession to peel out of it well done Zach <laughs> uh, I do kind of feel like Crux uh, this is like a good matchup for Crux so that's kind of my assumption I think that I don't want mutagenic growth Cling to Dust also seems somewhat weak. I think TBR isn't very good. You know what actually is probably very bad is Lava Dart. Lava Dart's probably pretty bad. I think I'd rather have Feed the Swarm than Lava Dart, honestly. So I'm kind of going with the plan of, like, I want all of my spells to either be threats or kill their threats. Or be card advantage in some form, like Crux or Culligan's Command. I think that's the way to play this. I don't think I need to get tricky. We're playing a 75 card mirror. Maybe not exactly a mirror, but we're playing pretty close to a mirror. Um, so I want my cards to actually kill their stuff. I think this is the way to do it. I'm bringing the cling back in because it's a value engine. Not really to disrupt the yard, although I guess it does do that. Uh, I'm on the draw. This is a mulligan, though. Alright. Here we have a passable hand. The question is... What are we bottoming? I think it's likely the Apostle's Blessing. This hand is not good. 
Do not get me wrong. I mean, it's not terrible either, but certainly not good. I feel like you really want to keep a seven in, a, in this kind of mirror match where it's just a lot of trading one for ones and card advantage is hard to come by, but here we are. You have immediately drawn two basics. That's excellent. Uh, so we're going to do this on ourselves. We really want to draw spells. We have all our lands we could possibly need now. Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is good. Take a Thoughtseize. We'll take a Thoughtseize. Ooh, opponents missing their land. Interesting. I was wondering why they didn't fetch. That makes a lot of sense now. Uh, they are a Luris deck, so getting Bobbles out of their graveyard has a decent amount of value. We drew another Delta. That's excellent. And by excellent, I mean it's not very good. Um, question is, do I want to keep thinning out Blood Crips? Probably. I can already kill a Scourge, so... Seems reasonable to do so. Right. I really don't want to draw another land with this hand. Getting up to like four is fine because of Luris, but going past that's not not where you want to be. I do imagine my Swift Spear is about to die here. That seems fairly likely to happen. But I mean, the end game here is Luris. This is kind of what I'm looking for, is to clear a path for that card. They did draw a land, but they're not very close to the shadow. And none of these actually kill Luris very well. Um, I would actually take the dart, but it doesn't... I don't know. It's not great against Luris. Maybe I should still take the dart. It is the only thing that actually kills Luris. Thoughts using a dart feels horrible, though. I think I'm supposed to take an actual push. It's kind of my read. I can already deal with most of what they have happening here. I'm actually kind of shocked they left dirt in their deck. It's, it does not seem very good to me. All right, Bobble's not terrible. I need to like ask if I can take a hit. I probably should not risk that. That seems like that's gonna do a lot to me. Although, I'm at 12, I'm not necessarily dead to a TBR. Oh no, this thing kills you with a TBR, I'm lying. I'm way dead to a TBR. Um, It's just so much more mana efficient to put Luris in my hand this turn. If I knew I was going to get to use the Bolt, I'd be happy about this, I guess. Um, I'm just going to kill it. The other awkward thing that could happen if I put Luris in my hand is they could rip, they could have ripped the Thoughtseize last turn or this turn and take my push and then I'm, I am just like way dead to that thing. What are they drawing? Bobble? No, they're, they're drawing Thoughtseize, so it's actually a very awkward turn for me to put Luris in my hand. Great. Swiss is pretty good, though. A little bit awkward against this Shadow card. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually think I want to put their shadow in play right now. I think that sounds bad. The other thing that's really awkward is they now get to Thoughtseize, take my bolt, and then their Luris is just protected. Oh, they're dismembering my Swift Spear. That's also terrible for me. I would like protection from Black Plez. So... Wait, are they not drawing Thoughtseize? 
They're drunk dismember. All right, I don't know how Mr.'s Bobble works, I guess. I definitely should have put lawyers in my hand that turn. That was horribly played on my part. I think it was the right play if I knew there if I actually knew they were direct thoughts these. What is this zone? The revealed zone. I I don't know. I don't know what that does. Alright, they have a shadow. <clears throat> so, I know these three cards in their hand. I can kill the shadow, but then I'm left with not an answer to Luris. Plenty Dust is kind of an answer. If I don't kill the shadow, it's probably just going to start running away with the game. They have to have a Phyrexian spell to protect their shadow. I think I'm going to use the bolt. I have a lot of removal spells to draw, too. I have a kind of get-out-of-jail-free card against Loris to begin with, with Kling. Um, and they can't necessarily... They're, they're really far away from casting this. In fact, I feel like they don't have the Phyrexian Man spell, specifically because it makes sense to play this out to get it killed so that Loris can actually bring something back. It's kind of where I'm at. So it feels like this is a safe kill spell and opponents just taking the risk that I won't be able to kill Luris, which I might not be able to, but I do have a Cling to Dust here to kind of get me out of that spot. Ooh, or I could just draw Thoughtseize, which would be just the perfect draw. All right, so they never had a Thoughtseize. I just don't know how my cards work. Very good. Very, very good. Let's get Luris in my hand. So it does feel like whoever thought sees the other person's Luris is going to win most of the time. And an opponent has nothing. Lava Dart looking truly horrible. Even against my one drop with no way to trigger it, they have to sacrifice a land to kill it. Like, that's so bad. I guess it kills Luris, but, like, I'm already going to get value out of it. Um... Honestly, I think I'm just going to cling here. I'll hit the dismember, sure. You want to exile things that Loris can't bring back. You have no other graveyard interaction, graveyard interactions other than that. So I imagine they're gonna kill my Swiss Spear here. That's fine. Um, they have to sacrifice a land to do it, which isn't great for them. Or just use two two lava darts. Fair enough. But I mean, they're left with four lands and a fatal push versus my four lands, two pushes and a Loris like. I think we have successfully outground the opponent, and we mold the six when they kept seven. Just because we we took the time to analyze our cards and decided one works better than another. They also can't kill my Luris right now, for what it's worth. They need a fetch line to do it, although I guess they could because I killed the Swiss Spear. Um, that was actually a really good spot to play the Luris, but I'm still just not going to play it. I want to get to five lands. I guess I get really punished by Thoughtseize. I mean, they're going to lose this Apostle's Blessing really bad. Or I can just Thoughtseize. That works too. So now they're actually on empty, playing against Dolores. Going to be tough for the opponent. What are they drawing? A shadow. That's actually a pretty good one. I wonder if they fetch it away. 
You can't fetch, right? You're a fatal push deck. You just need to leave up the revolt trigger. I guess the opponent does have two lava darts in their graveyard. Interesting. Oh my, are we doing Agadine's Awakening? That's very good here. Uh, I guess I did, like don't have like any threats, though. Alright. I will fatal push that. Play my Soul Scar Man and pass the turn. I'm going to hold this Agademes for a minute here. Ah. That actually exiling my graveyard is very good. Turns off this, turns off my Cling to Dust engine, which is really annoying. I actually would have hit Cling to Dust instead of Luris. I think that's pretty loose on their part, honestly. You have a value engine going, you just need to hit that one. I don't know. It also can gain life, which is not nothing. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I don't really want to fetch Shock here. I'll say that much. That thing is big. Oh my. That thing is very large. And they drew a shadow. Oh my. Oh my. Those things are quite large. Holy cow. Uh. How do I get back in this game? Bone has two lethal threats. Can I just kill them this turn? Well. Don't really think that I can. I can. Blessing. Goes to two. Agademes. For one. No, that's still not going to work right. Hmm. I can't even cast the blessings. I drew both my basics. It's really annoying. Well, I can't if I Agademes. I could just Agademes here. But then this is kind of dead. Um, I guess this, like, is kind of hasty next turn. Maybe that's the play. Hmm. Right, I'm going to play this Soul Scar. What I think I need to do is buy a turn. Opponent drew a shadow before me, which has uh, been kind of rough here. They drew two. I think I could have easily beaten one. The second one is tough. I think this is still winnable. Though, I just will be chumping this turn. Uh, Alright. So, double block. I'm never being a TBR if they drew that for turn. I think I just have to accept that. Block. Block. Okay. I need to pro black.
Feels like opponent drew like a burn spell or something. I'm ready to call for no justice in the black red mirror. I want an unfathomable game, game one, where opponent outplayed me. Then I drastically outplay them in game two, and they top deck like a god. <laughs> Okay. I like pro black. So, I'm not going to say I'm in a great spot here, but it feels like I have a chance. It feels like I have a chance. I need to draw a spell here, but spell wins, right? Any spell? Assuming your opponent's hand is a blank, which, you know, could likely be the case. Any spell. It needed to be non-creature spell. It couldn't be shadow. <sighs> well, what's the plan now? Lay out my shadow. I guess we're now in kind of like a grindy state where I can like block, block. Now I'm just dead to any removal spell though. I should probably play around it. I kind of hate it, but I don't hate it. I just kind of hate spewing this card. I think it's still right though. Um, Swift Spear. I guess I'm not attacking, so Soul Scar is slightly better. Any spell had them dead. That's frustrating. I guess in terms of, like, you know, when any spell would have them dead, drawing a Shadow is not the worst thing in the world to draw. And if they don't have removal spell, they don't have attacks. And even if they do have removal spell, there's, the attacks still aren't very good. Like, I just block, block. Like, they need Battle Rage. I mean, Battle Rage is going to kill me immediately. But, like, because my shadow's bigger than theirs, their attacks are, like, kind of bad. Well, four mana Soul Scar Mage, though. I am at one life against a Lava Dart deck. You don't love to see it. But we can gain life at a moment's notice, if need be, and then still have a slightly bigger shadow. Okay, so they're making me chump with my shadow. It's actually pretty good from them. Oh, no. What? I don't think that was the play. Alright, well, here we are. Now, opponent's like really dead to me drawing a good spell this turn. I guess they know what I'm drawing, presumably. I don't remember. Targeting me. Oh, they knew I was drawing land. Perfect. And it doesn't even have fetchable targets. You'll love to see it. I guess I hit their bubble. Three, four, and five. I thought I yielded to these already. Whatever. All right. No justice in the black red mirror. Opponent just draws, gets, you know, puts himself in a bad spot with Lava Dart, uh, gets outplayed on their Lurus, and then draws runner, 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 great card and destroys me. Such, such is life. Uh, feed the swarm. Re I don't know. Feed the swarm only is equal to CMC, right? Or is it power? No, it's gotta be CMC because it destroys an enchantment. I would like to play first. They didn't even know they had the bolt on top. They just drew it. It's so lucky. All right, this is a hand. I will keep this all day.
Question is, do I want to Thought Seize or play Swift Spear? I think it's time to get Swifty. Swift up. Um, this could just die. I mean, that is the case. But if I draw a fetch land, I can now Thought Seize plus Shadow next turn. If I don't draw a fetch land, okay. Oh, that works out for me. Now I can Thought Seize plus Shadow this turn. Still probably not going to do that. Oh my god, this hand has been so good for me. This is a nutty hand. These are the hands that actually make you think, okay, yeah, this deck might actually be the best deck in modern. I would buy that. Um, so I'm going to end up taking both their removal spells, I believe. Uh, the question is, which one would I rather them have? I think getting pathed is much better than getting pushed. I think that's pretty clear. And let's bolt their swift spear. And then bash for three. I am kind of turning on their shadow, but that's fine. That is fine by me. Blood stains out. So I wouldn't be shocked if they play both of these this turn. I'm just going to kill their Shadow and Thought Seize the Path, I think. And then I will be left with a Swift Spear and a Shadow versus a Swift Spear and probably a Luris, but so be it. I can just kill both again. Doesn't seem too bad. Could also race here. Like. Thought Seize, attack, they're at seven. Kind of like it. Kind of like the idea of trying to race. And they have nothing. I mean, now their next turn is literally put Luris in hand, which is fine by me. I am winning this race. I have the bolt. I have the big creature. That's a good thing to draw the turn before you're going to put Luris in hand. I will say that. I don't think it's enough, though. And in fact, I think they're putting themselves at a really low life total with the fetches. I mean, I think they kind of have to, but also, I don't think it's going to be enough. I wanted to see what I was drawing. A shadow, huh? Well, let's play that and this one. Now I have two six sixes. Opponent will have the bigger shadow this turn, but uh, I guess they don't have to fetch shock. Maybe I was supposed to bolt them. Bolting them there meant they couldn't use this land, which means they couldn't get anything off Luris. This, it might have been a mistake not to bolt there. The more I'm looking at this. I would not be surprised if that was the case. Um, so drawing like a shock land here would be amazing. Or if it, What is this kill? Permanence converted mana cost. Okay, so Feed the Swarm is actually insane, right? I feed the Luris, go to four, and then opponent has to double chump, or I guess trade. And they go to two, and they're dead. Yes. Feed the Swarm was an Excellent draw there. Oh no! 
No, I for, I shouldn't. I just, no, I forgot how shadow worked. No, we threw. If I just don't attack with Swiss Spear, we win the game. No. Oh, why? Why does it work this way? Ugh. What a punt. Yeah, I remember how cards work, I guess. We drew the card to get out of it, too, and then threw. Ugh. Ugh. I, I think I had to try to lose that game. I feel like that one was mine, and I just straight up threw. That is tough. Well... I will say this black red deck is very hard to play. There's certainly some stuff about it that's not very hard. Like, play my one drop on turn one, attack. Like, yeah, that, that part's easy. We get it. But managing life totals has felt tricky. Understanding your role in the matchup has felt tricky so far. A lot going on with this deck, for sure. Alright, we lost round two. I think if I wasn't a terrible Magic player, we could have won it. So I'm going to say we're 1-1. One one. Uh, obviously we're 0-2. Oh it doesn't like count towards prizes or anything. But uh, for the purposes of figuring out how good this deck is, and we're also playing a True Mirror. Losing, losing matches to True Mirrors isn't really representative of how good a deck is, if we're being honest. O2 in a modal league isn't a great place to test either, if we're being honest, but here we are. Uh, a hand with no threats. I think this is a mulligan. This hand's actually probably good. I'm going to bomb the cling. I want to have the, the red hand here that just goes kind of crazy. Uh, ugh. Alright, I'm going to save the bobble. I know that seems weird. I think it's right, though. And I'm just going to play the Soul Scar. I need to maximize prowess triggers here. Kind of get the full amount of damage. That's kind of my plan. Alright. Verdant Catacombs, so probably not a mirror. This is probably more like a Jun deck, a Jun Luris deck, maybe. Thoughtseize, ooh, don't love it. I imagine they take my bobble too. Although they are kind of taking a lot of damage next turn. They, they have to take Swift Spear, right? It's just too much damage. I assume they take a Swiss Spear. Taking one of my zeros makes sense. It makes the Swiss Spear less potent. Otherwise, I get an attack for, like, a lot next turn. Two, four, seven. Yeah, attacking for seven on turn two. It's a pretty good turn two. It took my bolt? I guess that makes sense. Oh, well, that would make even more sense, because they knew I was drawing another Swift Spear. What are you drawing? Nurturing Peat Land. So probably Jund. Alright, I want to get this out of the way before opponent can kill one of my guys in response and I get nothing from it. This way it's actually just a zero mana lightning bolt. Actually even better, it deals four damage, right? What is that, a nine? Okay, land's not bad there. 
Now another spell next turn, I think, wraps it up. Maybe they were right to take the bolt. Uh, that was a lot of damage. Oh, that thing's big, though. That is a big goif. Okay. I can put him to four. They're drawing street rates, so they're a shadow deck. Interesting. I think I like just attacking here. Yeah, I'm losing my soul scarf. That's fine. Uh, we're making all their stuff really bad. All right, Delta was not a very good draw. I was looking for Lightning Bolt, actually. Uh, but that's fine. An attack here would be aggressive. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I don't really think they can attack if I'm going out of my way to, like, chump attack. Well, that's, that's pretty darn good. Um, that one is good, certainly. Uh, I don't think it's good enough. I think I still want to just put Luris in my hand this turn and pass. It's kind of my read. And then just wait. And let opponent either hurt themselves or whatever. They're kind of in a spot where they, like, their lands are going to deal too much damage. And as soon as they go down to two, they're dead to the dart. Um, we're just gonna get we're just gonna get under the shadow deck because they had this expensive two drop in their hand, <laughs> and also Street Wraith looking kind of atrocious here, if we're being honest. But the reason I didn't go for it there was that uh, any removal spell blows me out. Right, I put him to I would have ended up putting him to one. This guy killed, and I chump attack into a goyf, and I would have no board with an opponent at one, and not even enough lands to cast my Luris, So. I think on the whole that was right. Ooh. Well, that one's good. Hmm. So, now I can actually just attack and force action. Yeah, I think I just have lethal now, right? If they use the peatland, they die. If they don't use a removal spell, they die. If they use a removal spell, I blow them out. Okay, well, now they're just dead. I guess, like, cling to dust maybe saves them. Maybe I should have thought that through more. If they have a cling, this would be really brutal. They didn't have it. Uh, still kind of want to take the same stratagem from the last one. I want to be able to kill their big stuff. And they have a lot of it. Um, I don't actually think Lava Dart is very good in this matchup, despite it looking decent there. I still don't like Team of Battle Rage. They just have bigger creatures than me. It's not, like, terrible... Maybe I'm supposed to leave Battle Rage. I don't know. Mm, Battle Rage is probably better than Mutagenic Growth, actually. What did I just bring in? I, like, accidentally brought something in here. Oh, carry turn. I don't want that. This seems decent. I think the Apostle's Blessing's still good. Yeah, I think I like all this. I could see cutting a Dismember, but I think it's fine. Yep, yeah, I like this. I could cut a Cling. Maybe like two Cruxes. I don't hate Cruxa. Just have some more threats. All right.
This hand looks good. This hand looks like it's going to deal a lot of damage to the opponent. Uh, we have the red hand game one. We're going to have the black hand game two. Take it. Ooh. Interesting. No reason to rush these. Like, I don't need to fetch Shock Thoughtsies necessarily. I can definitely lead on a Soul Scarab Mage, I think. I think that's fine. It's probably going to die, but... Such is the life of a Soul Scar Mage. If they don't use their mana to kill him on one, I think that's a win. I'll say that much. Like, if they have to use mana on turn two to do it, I'll take that. That's fine by me. Can I... Thoughtseize 16. No, I can't Thoughtseize in Shadow this turn. I actually kind of hoping they play like a Tarmogoyf and I can feed the Swarm it. That'd be nice. That would be a great use of my turn. Okay, Inquisition is less nice. Still fine, but less nice. The Scourge Fell is going to get big, man. This card is really busted in Shadow Mirrors. <laughs> Alright, they took my Shadow. That makes sense. Ugh, forest in a shadow deck? That's not good. Alright. I retract my statement. That's pretty good. Getting veiled is really brutal. <sighs> and now I've lost my. No, my feed this one. Interesting. Well, let's see what would win. One Tarma Joyf or one Scourgey Boy? Ooh, that's a pretty good draw. All right, nine, nine, go. That's, this thing is, keyword, large. It's an 11-11. Holy cow. Alright, well. Still was uh, no match for the thirst. And that kind of is the problem with this kind of card, right? They have a... They did not have a Luris game one, I don't think. They had Street Wraith in their deck. So they boarded out Street Wraiths and into Luris. Interesting. Would not have guessed that, but it does appear to have been to be the case. So the question here is do I wanna play the Scourge? Or play the Luris? Or like put Luris in my hand so I can set up better for next turn? I think setting up better is going to be fine. Playing this is better against Thoughtseize, which they could have, but they've already cast two discard spells. Although, they didn't do anything last turn, which could imply that they knew my hand was empty, uh, and then they like had discard spells and didn't do anything. I guess because it's better against discard spells, this is fine. Let's put another 11-11 in play. Okay, so they just had a decay, and I should have done the Luris thing. That's, uh, yeah, that's bad. 
It's bad for me. Well, let's try and get the beats in while we can. Opponent's going to get to Loris next turn and then replay their Goyf, presumably. Which will be not great for me. But if I can kill their Loris, I think I have a pretty good shot here. What are they drawing for turn? Seal of Fire. Okay. That's not good for me. It basically answers all of my things. And I drill land. You hate to see it. That said, I do get to put a scourge in play, which is pretty good. Cruxa, huh? I don't know how good that actually is. I think I'm still better off just playing the Scourge. I will lose my Lurus, which isn't great. But then I will have Giant Scourge. Yeah, otherwise they get to attack. I think I just have to play the Scourge and hope their hand doesn't have a removal spell in it. Uh, yeah. Seal was such a good draw for them. It's ridiculous. How many times can you kill my 1313? It's big, man. Keyword large. Keyword large. Apparently, enough times. It is annoying. I was going to say, they would be dead to Cruxa here, uh, except they're gaining life from Luris, which is kind of annoying. So I kind of need a land. Uh, wait, that kills them, right? Oh, baby! It was exactly lethal. Like, the only thing... <laughs> we take those. A little six mana burn spell damage here. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Could you discard? No. Take three. These Shadow Mirrors have no justice, man. The better player does not always win. It's just the mercy of the top deck, I think. Here we are. I feel like opponent played that game excellently and probably should have won and then <laughs> got mized by the six point burn spell on the last turn of the game. Alright, well, there we are. All right, this is a very strange hand. Uh, how good is Lava Dart in this matchup? I have no idea. I, I don't know. <laughs> if Lava Dart was good, if like I was playing as a deck with the X-Ones, I would snap this off, obviously. Uh, I think it's still a keep. I don't know. This is a very strange hand. All right, Horizon Canopy is probably a good start for a, a deck with a, <laughs> with a bunch of lava darts. We'll take it. We will indeed take it. Is it humans? Looks like humans. Okay, lava darts not bad against humans. Uh, Thalia is annoying, though. Hmm. I do think I'm supposed to conserve life. Let them attack me. Get rid of Thalia there. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, Lava Dart Against Humans is excellent. Very happy I didn't mold his hand, in retrospect. I mean, obviously, if this is a champion, I'm killing it. Nope. Oh, I should probably still kill it. Yeah, we can function on not that many lands. I'll eat it. This hand is good enough. I mean, if they have another Thalia, this goes really poorly for me. It looks like a Mantis Rider. Fair enough. That's actually good. That was one of the reasons I didn't fetch Shock, is that they have things like this. Is this a Phantasmal Image? That the card is really bad against Lava Dart. Oh my. Oh my. Alright. Um... To seven I go. Then five, I guess. Yeah. Getting a little sketchy. But we have managed to kill all of humans' things. They have one card left. You get to draw up to two and then presumably three when they crack their canopy. But we've got a shadow and another dart. I think we're in pretty good shape. They don't have Reflector Mage exactly. I was going to say, I guess they couldn't even crack the canopy before they played that second one. So they can't crack this one necessarily. They might be able to, but it's not clear they can. If they have a Reflector Mage, I'm in bad shape. If they don't, I think the game's... Ooh, that's a pretty good draw. Things starting to get a little, little hairy here. Getting kind of low, but... Oh, no Reflector Mage? All right. So opponent... Opponent dies here if they don't draw Reflector Mage. Mantis Rider doesn't kill me, but then they don't die. Mantis Rider would be bad, but I can Lava Dart and then Flashback two darts, and then I need, would need to draw land to kill them. Okay, so Meddling Mage doesn't actually matter. They did name TBR. The good news is, is I can kill it. I mean, they don't know I can kill it, but I could kill it. Uh, so I can't fetch Shock anyway, so I might as well get this Blood Crypt here. Why is there a Blood Crypt in my yard? Love dart. Um, all right. Let's dart that. Dart that. Go to combat. Attack. Cast a team or battle rage. And an opponent takes twenty-two. Got him. We got him. All right. I do think this is again. A more grindy matchup. It's not the one, not one where I want to try and get under him. I don't believe, and I do actually think this is a Codesel extra turn matchup. Apostle's blessing seems bad. Battle rage. Battle rage might actually be okay, but I don't love it. Uh, Mutagenic growth seems bad. I actually am probably not supposed to bring in feed the swarms. I should probably have just a TBR instead. Yeah, I can get behind that. Feed the Swarm is probably okay. Lava Dart's just like actively very good in this matchup, though. Okay. Uh, this hand doesn't look great, but I think it's better than it looks. I'm definitely taking a lot of damage. But I think it's going to be acceptable. Oh my gosh, so many thoughts these. Uh, cast. I want to play. Yes. We are dealing damage to ourselves here. Very good shadow deck. Uh, yeah, I want to take the Hierarch so that their hand doesn't do anything. Sounds good to me. No, uh, maybe I was supposed to leave the Hierarch. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm supposed to leave the hierarch so that it dies to this K return. I, I don't know. That was close. We also still don't have a threat, though, so that's kind of not great. Chalice of the Void? No, I hate that. Get that out of here. And... I'm going to hit the free boots. Chalice of the Void's horrible for me. Thank God I took that one. All right. Well, I do get to put Luris in my hand. Starting, getting to the point where I think I need to be saving some life, because uh, things might get a little hairy here going forward. TBR is a truly terrible draw step. I'm not going to play the Lurus until it gets value. It'll just get Reflector Maged. I'm just going to let them put something in and kill it. And honestly, probably supposed to just get the full Dismember without paying life off, I think. Trying to save life to uh, better play around Mantis Rider. That's kind of what I'm going for. Alright, just running that out. Fair enough. Sunbaked Canyon. I think I'm going to Lightning Bolt this. Play out the Canyon. Saving the canyon to turn on the push. It's kind of the idea. Oriok Champion. That was why I kept Kozilek's Return. was specifically that card. Um, Alright. Does it appear they're going to let me get this value? So I'm just going to crack this now. A fetch would also work. Uh, yeah, I need to just kill this thing. This thing's scary. But they're in a spot where they don't really want to use their Reflector Mage either, and I'm actually starting to be able to bait them with the Swiss Spear. I mean, not quite, but... I do somewhat bait them at least. Ooh, phantasmal image. Okay. Be a good time to draw a dart. Hmm. I guess I don't actually care about Reflector Mage all that much. Let's play Swift Spear. Hit the champion, go to combat, get some attacks in. It's weird because I'm actually like somewhat interested in trading just so I have something to get back with Luris. Um, but opponent doesn't seem to want to give me that option. Alright. Now the question is do I hit the champion? Or the mage, it's still probably better to hit. Well, I definitely don't want to take a hit from both. I'm going to do this during combat. If they have another human, it's better to hit the champion. But if they have, I guess, fan, uh, they could cast Phantasmal. I guess I'm supposed to hit the champion.
All right, so it would be an excellent turn to draw a bobble. Cakerman's also not bad, though. It's not good either, but it's not bad. So what does the opponent have here? Leaving Swift Spear back to Chump. I might need to. Um, they have, like, another Reflector Mage or two two things. I don't know. I don't think the one point is going to matter that much. And honestly, Chumping's, like, not even that bad here because I can just recast it. Like, it's not even, like, negative resources necessarily. I almost have, like, a free Chump here. And that would be a reason to want a free Chump. That one's not bad. Okay, so that was all. That was all their stuff. Let's see what happens when I had double attack. I think this looks like a weird attack. They're just taking damage. Okay. Um. Target player discards a guard. Do I destroy the artifact or kill the lieutenant? Probably the lieutenant. If they drew a three drop creature, this is pretty brutal. Nothing else in their deck works very well here though. They drew a two drop creature. You'll take that. I was gonna say they should not attack there. Um, K return's not good here. So, I do think I'm supposed to keep attacking with Swift Spears. If opponent blocks, then that's fine. I don't think they will, yeah. Still probably not right to TBR. Alright, we're waiting. Out here on the chill. Somewhere, I'm going to draw something that works with Luris. It's going to happen. We're going to draw something to use with Luris. Ooh, with the attack? Alright, I'm not blocking. Interesting. Feels like maybe, maybe a way to kill my Luris now. Or... Okay, interesting. Card is Fatal Push, okay. Hmm. So, I do think I'm supposed to attack with Luris. Interesting they just let that happen. Put 9-9 nine nine Shadow in play. That's a big, big shadowy boy. Back out of Manus Rider range. We'll take it. I probably was supposed to attack with definitely one of the Swift Spears. Probably both. No. I didn't do it though because if attacking with both like isn't good if they just don't block, which is kind of like what I'm hoping to do if I were to attack with both anyway, right? All right, another R mage here is pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. Is this defensive TBR turn? It kind of feels like it. Alright, let's do it. Defensive TBR, go. Ha! Does 
doesn't even really do that much. <laughs> But I get to recast it. Perfect. Am I interested in attacking with Luris? I still feel like I'm not. I'm just gonna keep chilling. Using the TBR might have been loose. I'll say that much. Might have been loose. Reflector Mage is a really busted card when you're pressuring the opponent. When you're in a stalemate, it doesn't actually do very much of anything, as it turns out. So is this a spot to attack with Luris yet? I think it's close. Like, the only way I can really lose the game from here is, like, I guess a Deputy would be really bad. I think I'm supposed to attack with this. The real way I'm losing is if they just, like, have a Mana Strider and then draw another thing. Like, I, I could easily lose, but if I go to seven, I don't think I can lose, and then I just have, like, a bunch of giant threats. And they just also aren't blocking for whatever reason. I don't really understand that. I guess they think I have a Coligan's Command. Like, they saw one already, so they think I have a second. Like, in my mind, the only way an opponent can win this game is they use Vile. Like, they end a step, end of turn in some three drop that's good, untap, cast another spell that they maybe drew for a turn that maybe gets them out of it. I, I don't know. I, I think this is just too much pressure for them. I think that's what's going to end up happening. Okay. Do we have another Armage? No, General Cru General Crujo's good. It's a lot of power, actually. Um... Yeah, I can't really use K-Return here in a productive fashion. It'd be sick if it did 3 damage. I would take that. Would be awesome if it did 3 damage. Oh, baby. Finally something to do with Luris. We got there. I win the match? What? <laughs> Punk just conceded to Mistress Bobble. What is that? <gasps> just happened. Alright. So, recap even though this league looks bad, lost to white black removal spell planeswalkers. That matchup seemed atrocious for Shadow. Not what you want to play against. Gonna happen. I lost a mirror in which I played like a donkey in game three and lost from an unlosable position. Well, not unlosable, but from a position I should have found a win. I found a loss. Uh, and then I have two of my next two opponents. So the, the deck still feels pretty good. I don't think this league's record is telling the full tale. I think this hand is a keep. It's a little weird, but I think it is a keep. A little black heavy, but I think that's fine. River of Tears. Oh no. That's gotta be Solta. Don't love to see that. I guess I should have played my bubble. I still think it was fine to save. And I was saving it so that I'd get a trigger. Um, it's bad mostly against exactly discard. Take my Apostle's Blessing. Okay. That's probably bad for me. I imagine my Soul Scar Range isn't long for this world. Uh, so, opponent's playing... Uh, the TSP Gendrix Soul Tie List, or my Soul Tie List, the, the Soul Tie List you watched two days ago on the channel. Um, 
what that means for me is that almost all their cards do the same thing. They're either a kill spell, a counter spell, or in a row. Uh, so I would rather bobble myself. Thoughtseize. Is Thoughtseize good? I don't actually think it is. I think it's like, okay. I'm going to do this. I want threats. I don't actually care about taking something out of their hand. All their stuff is the same thing. When it's like that redundant, it's not very good. Yeah. I'm just going to bash. And taking damage because if this deck kills me, it's with an Uro, which was going to kill me anyway. I'm not beating it and that's a pretty good draw better than a thought sees I'll say that much do they not have a second land I guess this could be like fairies yeah you gotta play the other land if you wanna kill my guy that's how river tears works I don't know what just happened there All right. bolt's actually pretty good I will take a bolt. This thing's keyword big, man. All that said, uh, I don't know if it's big enough. No, I already played a land. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play it. I mean, it's definitely big, obviously. Uh, all the removal in this deck is still going to kill it, though. It's not like I'm out of range or something. It's probably going to get... Oh, Reman? Reman is fine. Opt. So this is... This is definitely not the Gendrick list. I mean, it has some of the same cards, but that list did not have Opt. Dark Slick Shores, so... This could be a lot of things. This could be like mill. I wouldn't be shocked if this is mill, honestly. It'd be strange if it was mill. Be like blue black control, just no arrows. I don't know. Relic of Progenitus. Okay, that's uh, really good against me. About to get Luris, but they also left Soul Scare Range in play, so. Uh, Kling gets fizzled by Relic, huh? That's pretty awkward. I do think I'm supposed to shock in the Agate Demons. That's not going to do very much against the Relic, and I'd rather be able to get the Kling when they tap this in a turn. Would just like to trade this for one card, Plez. Okay, they didn't even give me the shot. The shot. That's uh, that's not great. Not great for me. Thought sees. All right. Well, Things aren't looking great, but if opponent doesn't have a kill spell, I'm actually in a pretty good spot because they're just going to die to the Soul Scare. They're also at three, and I have Lightning Bolt in my deck. Murderous cut, huh? Okay. We are officially out of stuff. We have no stuff. Oh, Scourge is a nice draw. Take that one. That's a big fella. Good old 11-11. Just out here chilling. I still have no idea what I'm playing against. This could be anything. Omen of the Sea? What is this? It's like blue black control, I, I guess. It still feels like it could be mill. 
I hit their opt. Ooh, we found a dismember. Take it. All right. Still no clue what was going on there, but we won, so we'll take it. Opponent had cantrips and some kill spells and some thought seizes and a relic main deck. Yep. The main deck relic makes me not really want to bring these in, but the blue-black part of the deck makes me want to bring them in. I think I will. Uh, I hate TBR in these matchups. I'm going to cut mutagenic growth, though. That one seems like the worst. I really don't like... Mutagenic Growth is not good against black removal. Against red removal or other creature decks, it makes some sense, but... I don't like it against black removal. Uh, I do like Apostle's Blessing. The question is, do... I don't want to cut the Cling. Cling seems not very good. Or necessary, for that matter. If it was a Sultai deck and they had Uro, I would want Cling, but... I would board very differently if that were the case. I don't know what's... It has a land, but it doesn't cast my Swift Spear. This is a fetch land I do think I would keep. I think otherwise, I think given that it's not, this is a mulligan. Oh, and this hand's quite good. Um, the question is, what am I bottoming here? I'm tempted to bottom a Scourge, although bottoming a Threat seems kind of bad. The other option is to bottom one of these, or the Dart. Um... Kind of better on curve. Uh, I'm gonna bottom a scourge. I think, I think I'm gonna regret bottoming the scourge, but it's just gonna be the slowest thing happening here. I think there's a chance I'm supposed to just bottom the dart. You want to just keep threats. I mean, if I knew I was drawing the land, I would have bottomed the land. But here we are. Tears looks nice. That's a sweet card. So trying to push damage this turn so that this is playable. That's kind of the idea here. Dart you. And I do kind of really wish Blue Black Eldrazi, excuse me? What? What am I playing against? What is this? Am I about to get Sire of Stagnation? Is this really happening? Oh my. Opponent just be out here. <sighs> this deck feels not good against the um, the removal suite of Fatal Push plus Blood Chief's Thirst. That's really tough for this deck. It's kind of relying on outsizing red removal. And when they just have a bunch of one mana black removal that kills all your stuff and you get no benefit out of it, it feels pretty bad. Yeah, still feels pretty bad. Lava Dart is a truly awful draw, just very bad. Some chance I was supposed to board it out. This card is atrocious. I, I think I need to maybe reconsider. Like, it's really, really good in your good draws, but it's so, so bad when they kill your prowess creatures. In this deck. And I, it, I don't even have, like, enough burn that I can, like, realistically just, like, count it as a shock. Which is kind of tough. I think, like, in Prowess, you'd never board this card out. Like, Mono Red, Burn, like, it's just so good in that deck. But in this deck, I do think it's worse. Despite still being a good card, I do think it's good. I have absolutely no idea what's happening here. 
opponents on some nonsense. Uh, they're playing a bunch of good cards. This is a very, very strong card. These are very strong cards. And there goes Luris. Aussie's a very strong card, and they have Omen of the Sea. Oh my gosh. Do I dart myself so I can play a shadow? I don't hate it. Dart me. I want to get this shadow man in play. How's your shot? What do you what do you got over there? Something big? Yes, no. Could be anything. Interesting. Uh so I can stone raid myself and lava dart myself twice to keep this alive. It seems a little aggressive. You know what, F it. Live by the shadow, die by the shadow. We're here. We out here. <laughs> this is what it's come to. <laughs> nice minus two, minus two effect. Take that. All right, now I feel stupid. <laughs> Alright, some big canyons a not bad draw. It's not great either. Would have been a lot better if I could have cracked it, because I still had lands in play and it just let that that shadow go. Uh, but here we are. Jace Wielder of Mysteries. What am I playing as? What is this? Oh, this is inverter! I'm playing as modern inverter. That's what I'm playing against. Oh, <laughs> This is dope. This is sweet. Oh, I want to try this. This is really cool. All right, I can get behind. I I appreciate what opponent's doing. I have a crux in my yard. Oh, they milled me. Nice. <laughs> Sacking my lands was truly horrible then, I guess. All right. Good to know. Good to know. All right. I now understand what's happening. I thought they were playing like Ulamog's Nullifier and Sire's Stagnation. Inverter makes a lot more sense. Uh, I don't think any of this like is very good. Lava Dark felt really bad though. I guess a Kling is slightly better if they're going to mill me. Uh, do I want... Like, Tormod's Crypt, it kind of turns off their inverter kills. Not quite, but it, like, kind of does. Sand's a little bad, but I do think it's a keep. It just does a lot of damage, and it does it quick, which I like. Man, I will say too, just like having played this league, what a difference the three mana rule has made on Luris. Holy cow. This card was so broken before, like ridiculously broken. In this league, it's like been in my hand and gotten thought seized more than I've cast it. Which I guess uh, makes sense for the card. I, I wanted to pop the bobble. I'm not really sure why I didn't. Got wrapped up on how absurd Luris is, I guess. Oh, wow. This is a really bad hand from the opponent. I guess it's like kind of a quick inverter. Um, I mean, I think 
if I take the Oracle, I guess I would just draw it. Why don't I just take the Inverter? This hand just doesn't actually do anything at all. Yeah, let's take the Inverter, I guess. Now opponent's hand does nothing. I should have bobbled them first to know what they were drawing so I get full info. They're drawing a fatal push. Okay. Fair enough. That means, though, that I do get to spend next turn uh, putting Luris in my hand, which is kind of good. I imagine they're pushing here. No? Alright. It's possible I didn't do enough a good enough job trying to get them to use the push there. Cause I don't want them to like get to omen here for um like a thought season, take my Luris before I get to use my bubbles. I am gonna stop in their upkeep and see what they're drawing though. I can't see uh, two cards on top, so I get to see the second one they kept. Water grave. So they kept a land. Fair enough. Does make some sense. Ugh. They still have a push. They're starting to get kind of low, though. Is this Lily? Okay. Lily's... This card's not... Oh, they're getting back their inverter. Okay. How close am I to killing the opponent? Oh my. Um... There's, like, no way they're inverting plus oracling next turn. I'm going to play this and pay three, I think. The question is, how? what's the best way to utilize the rest of my turn? I can for sure put lethal in play. It's just got to be play shadow, Luris, and this and save the bolt, I think. That's got to be right. Uh, how much does the Liliana matter? I don't think it matters that much. Putting him to six does feel like it matters. I guess it costs me power next turn, like two power. Does that matter though? It's a negative one. Zero off this, one off this, two off this. So then I don't have lethal next turn if I don't kill it. I don't necessarily have lethal. I still might. But TBR kills them. The other nice thing about killing them... Hmm. This is a really tough turn. So I know their hand has a fatal push. They definitely have an inverter in it. That's gone, that's gone. And they have multiple... They have a fatal push and inverter, two Jaces, and a Thassa's Oracle. Hmm. This is tough. Let's see what they're drawing. I definitely think I'm playing Luris this turn. The question is, am I attacking Liliana? I 
River of Tears. So that's a really good draw for them. I do think I'm supposed to attack Liliana. I think that's close, but I do think it's right. And I'm going to play my Shadow. I think this is the best turn. It's tough. Oh, TBR is an excellent draw. That was like the best draw in my deck. That was the card I wanted to draw more than anything. And I think locks the game up mostly. Although they do get to leave a fatal push in. Huh. But. They're going to have to use. Okay, yeah. So they die here. They do die here. Uh, still better to bolt them, right? I guess it doesn't matter. They're dead either way. I know their hands, so I know they don't have force negation, but if they did, I'd get them. Or this would blow me out. Oh, Inverter's sweet, though. That's something I want to try. I don't really know how you're supposed to make the deck work without uh, Dig Through Time. That one always felt kind of important. So Verdict on this deck, it feels like it's strong. It feels like it's doing a lot of really powerful stuff. Um, it does feel a little awkward. There are some dis synergies between the black half and the red half. It does feel like it's just two decks jammed together, like... There's this package, and there's, you know, this package. Uh, this package here, and they're kind of tied together by Bobble, Phyrexian Spells, and Luris. And it is synergistic. It just feels a little awkward. It feels like, I don't know, it feels close. It feels, it feels like it's probably a Tier 1 deck. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sold it's better than Prowess. I'm not sold. Prowess, to me, has just consistently been very strong. So I would not be shocked if Prowess was still better than this. But it feels like a pretty good deck. Um, yeah, going forward, I don't know. I, I think this deck is real. Cruxa eh, kind of never felt that good. Although it did win me that one match. So maybe it's a really, you know, it is a powerful card. Good threat to board into, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the deck's good. The mana... It felt like it could use another Shockland. Um, I could definitely see like a Sacred Foundry in this deck. Uh, over one of the ten fetches. And then you'd get access to like Path Exile or something on the sideboard. I don't know if you need that, but that's a place we could go with it. Um, honestly, the Apostles' Blessings were cute. I don't know if they were ever actually very good. They were alright though. They weren't like terrible. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like the deck. Uh, but remember, if you want to see anything on this channel, you're welcome to leave a comment, request a deck for me to play in Modern. I'm just going to be kind of plowing through some Modern decks, trying some stuff out, really seeing what I like in the format, what's the best thing, what's the worst thing, uh, and just kind of how everything feels. Um, and if you like the content we're making here, you can like the video. You can subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it if you would do that. Uh, and yeah, with that, we'll talk to you next time.